And welcome back to The Breakfast once again. We are kicking off straight into business of the day with, uh, of course, our news with a review. We call it Off the Press. And uh, we're going to be starting with stories on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. If you have a copy or you can quickly look at our screens, that will be flashing um, on your screen very soon. And, uh, of course, we've uh, once again invited Ezekiel Nyayatok to share his thoughts on these major stories across uh, the country this morning. Uh, good morning once again, sir. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be on Plus TV Africa. All right. So let's get straight into it. The Tribune this morning, of course, uh, the big one across the world is uh, Trump supporters defile the U.S. democracy over on Congress. Uh, of course, a clash with security men disrupt Congress certification of uh, Biden's victory. A woman was shot in the chest. Also, reports say, you know, maybe three or four people have been um, um, killed in, you know, the violence from yesterday. Also, Finance Act 2020 exempts minimum wage earners from taxes. 2023 presidency, APC chieftains back Osoba on power rotation. Says uh, zoning is a moral burden on ruling party. Osoba and others were deceived, Afeniferre is saying. Also on the Tribune this morning, FCMB appoints Yemi Edun as uh, acting managing director. Uh, COVID-19 infection rates soaring across the nation, and that is from the NCDC. And the Niger state governor says, I won't negotiate with criminals. Um, one or two others, NIN, Nigerians to pay 25,000 Naira for correction of date of birth and card replacement. And uh, Coco House elevator crashes, kills one, injures three others. One or two others I'll quickly share. Edo Court nullifies Isaiah Yamo's deputy's candidacy. And uh, also, electricity groups, MAN and OPC, kick against tariff adjustment. These are the big ones that we can find this morning on the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, Ezekiel, I think uh, we may want to start from the United States this morning. Uh, numerous uh, angles to this story. Yes. Um, I, if you will permit me, I'll pass that for another paper because, I mean, it's in all the papers. But of there course, are some very um, instructive stories I won't want to uh, miss on um, the Tribune. One of them is um, 2023 and Oshoba. And I think that the story that what's going on in America is something that should wake us up. If it doesn't, then it will be too sad. The question is, who do you send to the White House? Who do you send to the Hilltop? Who do you send to the villa? Who? And the time has come when we must explore our leadership recruitment profiling. I want to ask a question. If we understand what a country is and that a country is, is more important than the biggest blue chip in the world, is more important than ExxonMobil, is more important than any other institution in this country, I want to ask if ExxonMobil, for instance, wanted to recruit a CEO and a man like Oshoba, with all due respect, was on the list. Another person was Kingsley, Kingsley Professor Kingsley Mohaulu, on the list. Another person was um, Mr. Um, the former Anambra State uh, Governor, uh, Peter, Peter Obi, was on the list. I want to ask Nigerians, just to limit to these three, or Madam Obi Ezekwesili, or even Madam Okonjo Iweala, that is being, I mean, the toast of the globe, if these four or five people were on the list and they were to be interviewed for the top job of the CEO of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who amongst them will stand a chance? Who amongst all these names that we are touting will stand a chance? The time has come when we have to ask ourselves that we should take this country serious. Look at what's going, to, going on in America. The man you send to our hilltop mansion or to our villa, is the man that is going to decide very many things. And when politicians start to bring one of their own, with all due respect, we Nigerians have a moral burden. We are the voters. We are the owners of the system. The politicians are people that we send. The time has come when we must set a clear template on who should be the next, who we should recruit as the next CEO of Nigeria. Let's stop seeing Nigeria as a political entity. Let's start seeing Nigeria as a management platform that is managing our common pat patrimony. So as the politicians start to throw their names, we, the professionals, have to also come and start setting the bar. Let the politicians 
act based on the bars that we have set. And I want to tell you that for 2023, we have decided, we the professionals, I, I, I've been able to join Fixed Politics Nigeria at the highest possible level. And I'm also in Nigeria National Consultative Front at the highest possible. And there are so many other groups. We are coming together and politicians will no longer decide the, uh, the, the, the criteria because they are the players. You, you can't be the player and then you set the rules. No, we, the Office of the Citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we are going to set the criteria for our next CEO come 2023. Politicians can play their game. Oh, no, I don't believe this. Politicians can play their game, but we are definitely going to have our way and they will play by our rules and not by their rules. All right. Now, um, that, <laughs> go ahead, so please. That uh, was very, I think we can take one more before we move on. Yes. Um, the, the second one I want to take on this uh, tribune has to do with NIN and paying 25000 I'm still yet to understand what that means. If you replace your, if you lose your card, you need to pay 25000 Naira to replace that card. Now, that sounds horrendous, you know, or to correct your name if you have a, a, a date of birth, um, you know, mistake. I don't even know how you'll have a mistake on your date of birth. Except people, uh, particularly maybe civil servants, who have been having, who may be having two, three different dates of birth because of them just keep changing those so that they won't leave office. So maybe for those people, but for the rest of us, I don't really know how I'll forget that November 1, 1963 is my birthday and I need to change it. It doesn't apply. But that said, for you to tell me that I need to pay 25,000 naira, either as a deterrent, I don't understand because. All the people in the villages we want to capture because, you know, NIN is not an elitist thing. It's a Nigeria thing. So please let us interrogate these uh, policies very well before we go on them. The issue of strike and the rest, electricity tariff, I think we can take them from other papers. All right. Brilliant. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go to the Nation newspaper now. The top story here says, Governor Bandits in North recruited from Mali, Sudan. They're saying they're hired through social media. We've seen this uh, occur in other parts of the world with regards to uh, other terrorist organizations. And now it seems it's caught on here in, the, in Africa with uh, bandits being touted to be recruited from social media from Mali and Sudan uh, in North Nigeria. Uh, here it says another court contradicts judgment on Ize Iyamu. Uh, it's shocking how uh, the Edo politics is still in the news long after the elections. Uh, COVID-19, second wave killing people. How COVID-19, second wave is killing people? That's by the CMD of Luth. This one says uh, tariff hike timing is wrong. And that's by man. And this other story says Sultan's GNI attacks Kuka and Bishop lashes gov President Buhari's government again. And still a story on the U.S. Capitol Hill invasion, Pence Pelosi evacuated as pro-Trump pro protesters sack U.S. Congress in session. And Mr. Iyadok, which one of, of these stories would you like to highlight from uh, security I, to COVID-19? I would like to take the headline, which is very instructive. And I want to take it from a completely different perspective. I stay here in Aquaibom. And I want to tell you that all the cows that are in Aquaibom, they don't belong to the Malams that, that carry them. They belong to Aquaibomite. I've been very, very, um, 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 you know, um, instructively informed on that. What am I trying to say? When we see the cows, we think of Malams have come again, but they actually belong to us. Now, we need to interrogate the business of banditry and the complicity of Nigerians. If these people are recruited, if they are hired, the question is by who? And number two, are the security agencies unaware of this? You see, banditry or terrorism or, you know, all sorts of, it, it has all sorts of names that are just coming from one side. Whether we call it, um, you know, terrorism, Boko Haram, banditry. And, you know, we have all sorts of funky and um, uh, sexy names for them. The issue is, who are those behind? It, it's an enterprise. And when we start to make cheap money and the government does not come hard on it, it becomes very difficult to stop. Imagine that you can just recruit people, 
you know, there was a story that uh, was in the, there was um, this video in the, in, the, in the social media of a man that a hired tracker, a, you know, um, not, not tracker, um, what, what disbands trackers? So if you put um, that, it, it, dis it dis disables you no know, trackers in a car. He bought it and gave people, and they used it to um, steal cars for him. And cars that he was selling for three million, he bought them for six hundred thousand. What am I saying? He's able to recruit people and give them this to make cheap money. The question is: To what extent have we really sat down? The federal government needs to come hard on these things that we are toying with. Number one, because of kidnapping and all those things, our children are no longer going to school in the north. Have our northern brethren really sat down to? understand the implication of this on the long run in the next five years, 10 years, 15 years. Parents out of the love for their children can't stand the risk of sending their children to school. Children, even if the parents say, look, education is so important, they are so traumatized, they are so afraid that they can't even think of wanting to go to school. Have we realized what this is doing to the foundation of this nation in the next five, 10, 20 years? Are our leaders really thinking the time has come when we that call ourselves professionals and we think we know what thinking is all about have to step into the political arena and seize this arena because the people that are there, a lot of them are entrepreneurs. They are political entrepreneurs. They really don't understand the essence of government and governance. I can never quote this enough. As a matter of fact, some people have started like calling me chapter two, you know, chapter two, right. section 14, subsection 2B says that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Mm. So we okay. need to step in because all this banditry thing is business, it's an enterprise quickly, and must be stopped. Quickly also share on uh, the Nasima uh, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, speaking on the hiking tariff, uh, electricity tariff, um, you know, what are your quick thoughts on that one uh, before we move on it, to the it, next paper? It's something that I, I, I find a little disturbing. Timing is everything in, poli in, in, um, in policy formulation and a buy-in of the people. The best policy that don't, doesn't have the buy-in of the people is bound to fail. But the worst policy that has the buy-in of the people stands a better chance of succeeding. We have two different um, contracting, uh, contradicting you know, um, opposites that we need to manage very well. Number one is that you can't do business at a loss. It doesn't make sense. If you produce something for 10 naira, you can't sell it for eight, except somebody subsidizing, and we don't have the money to subsidize. So there must be cost-reflective tariff. At the same time, we are at a situation where we want to encourage production. So the federal government has to sit down and decide where the resources should go in the interim. You know, with time, you can adjust. So... I agree with man that bringing all these um, increases in tariffs, they just destroy, make a bad situation worse. At the same time, I know that the, the, the discos, the genco's cannot give us power except it is cost reflective. So the question is, what are we subsidizing? Are we subsidizing inefficiency? Are we subsidizing corruption? Why, why don't we really sit down and look at this and take hard decisions? Mr. President really needs to bring, you know, thinkers to go through the processes and give him the line of best fit in the circumstance. All right. Mm. Let, let's now move to the Daily Sun uh, newspapers. Uh, the big one you can find over there, of course, is talking once again on the uh, labor uh, preparedness uh, for strike over electricity tariff. I think you already spoke on that. Um, Igbo would resist any attempt to destroy Ohaneze, and that is from... Uh, Hakim. And then this one is um, pretty confusing and, you know, for pe many people will say shocking. It says the federal government to borrow on claimed dividends and dormant, uh, uh, dormant rather, account balances. Uh, releases $11.818 billion for payment of MDA retirees. And also another Unilag professor, deputy governor's brother, dies of covid Avoid another lockdown, Songwo Lu warns uh, Lagosians. And uh, we also find here a court, uh, China blocks WHO team from entering country to study coronavirus origin. Uh, help understand the idea of the federal government borrowing on claimed dividends and dormant account balances. 
Uh, what you know is that likely to be about? Yes, I, I, I'm one of those that have always advocated that these unclaimed dividends and dormant accounts should not be left in the banks to make money and profit therefrom and all that. I'd actually made a proposal on how you can graduate unclaimed dividends into 20 years, 10 years, five years, and what to do with it. I had a very, very, very elaborate analysis of all these things because we're looking for money and we cannot go borrowing money when there are some monies that are sitting in the banks and because the MD CEOs and real owners of banks are the big people in government, they fail to tackle the banks. The banks are one institution in this country that we really need to beam such light on because there's a lot of unethical things that they are doing. They are not supporting businesses. They are making a lot of money and they are making cheap money. And it doesn't go that way. It shouldn't be that way. On the other hand, I fear that, you know, there has to be, uh, we can't have that elaborately discussed here, but it's one of the things I've put forward time and time again on what should be done responsibly. What bothers me is that we do not have the level of responsible leadership that we collect our money and invest this money in a way that really makes sense. Now, when you look at, you know, things like the rail, that should be very good. The question is, number one, what's the cost of the rail? Number two, where are the locations of the rail? Is it political or based on strategic economic interest? These are things that a government will come one day and put politics aside and face development and face what makes sense and best returns on the investment. Government is the manager of the resources of the people. Yeah. And any way you manage, you want to have best returns on Mr. investment. Talk. But the I talk, some time. Apologies, for, apologies for jumping in um, so abruptly, but aside what the government will do with the money, yes. how you know, does it make sense that the Nigerian government wants to take money from dormant accounts and unclaimed dividends? Is Nigeria that broke? Uh, and you know, you, I, what, what exactly does that mean you know, with regard to our, our need, search for I money? Are you living in space when Nigeria is going every day to China to borrow money? You know that. That's, that's the headline. Borrow, borrow, borrow. They are borrowing everywhere. My guy, instead of them going to China and with the risk of you know, letting go some of our national assets on account of not being able to repair because this borrowing is not done strategically. I do not know the basis that China gives some of these our loans. And you know, there are certain places that you go to borrow and they give you very strict conditions. But China is so sweet and so easy. You need to borrow where they will put real fire on your head. The more fire they put on your head, the better for you because you must always borrow with an intention to pay back. And not to say, well, well, I have four years to go. Uh, I just want to do some things, finish my tenure. Whoever comes to take over from me, that's his headache. I think that we should be able to interrogate the leadership profiling. I will never say this enough. So Nigeria is broke. Nigeria needs money. Nigeria doesn't have money. So for me, instead of going out to borrow, let's come inwards and see if there's any way we can re-strategize and we can get more funding and we can take money from people who are going to watch where you are going to put that money into and be able to have uh, returns on investment. We, we That's know. why when you talk about pension funds, you know they first went for pension funds, people started shouting. Now they are going for dormant accounts and unclaimed dividends. And it makes sense, but let it be done. Let them call the organized private sector to sit down, interrogate it, and approve it, and mm. not just send it. You know, well, there's it, something it, about it, the it Senate sounds, that maybe... It sounds good when you talk about looking inwards. You know, we're going to move to the Daily Independent next. But, you know, when you talk about looking inwards... Um, yeah. Unfortunately, you may not have time for you to respond to this, but I just wanted to chip in. Looking in what? Yeah. Shouldn't that or the concern of the Nigerian government be looking for ways to block leakages and to reduce the cost awesome. of running the government? We, we have heard awesome. too many times of how monies are being spent frivolously in Nigeria. Um, there's Our so much corruption still that. going on in the country. We it, should get angry enough to stop these wastages, wastages from our public officers. I really want to call on all well-meaning Nigerians to come in and join. You know what I've done in Akwa State? I have made the, the budget public. 
and I've made it across everywhere and everything in the budget. We are sending it to everybody, all the nooks and crannies, wherever we are, and we are setting up teams to monitor this thing. We can't leave government to government again. We can't do that. All right. Ben, yes. Maybe just no, my last comment on yeah, maybe okay. whichever is last paper, let me just one comment and which has to do with the White House, which I said I would look at before. Uh, uh, I want uh, you to uh, let's let's share from the Daily Independent. You know, hopefully it comes up there and then okay. you can take it from yes, there. Yes, that story is right here as well on the Daily Independent. But the big story here says it's about the 2023 zoning controversy. It says why APC presidential primary will be open to all aspirants. Tony Momo here saying it won't be good to consider the North again. And here is talking about COVID-19, second wave claiming many lives. Luth CMD laments and Unilag loses another professor to coronavirus. And still on security matters, traditional rulers, locals, harboring bandits. That's according to Bello. On page four of the Daily Independence, there's a story here saying pandemonium as explosion rocks Rivers community. And Edo Guba Paul courts nullifies candidacy of Izeyamu and Ganeu. And Nin, NIMC announces charges for card renewal and others as well as the story of FCMB appointing Yemisi Edu as acting MD. Now, those are the top stories on uh, the Daily Independence okay. here. Uh, I'm saying, yeah, the story so, about I'll 2023 take, I'll presidency. Just take the bottom two. I'll just take the bottom two. Right, number, quickly, first, please. number one, shout out to the MD uh, designate of um, um, FCMB. Okay. Uh, um, um, that's it. A lady... I mean, my, my, my joy is that a lady is there and I'm happy. Anywhere that women get into, a lot of times, I'm happier because they are usually more circumspect and more careful. Then, White House Trump, the bottom line, is in the paper. Two things. Number one is that let Nigerians learn two lessons. Lesson number one, oh youth, as Trump supporters have gone in there, Trump is going to leave the office. The CCTV is going to identify all those supporters. They are likely going to be jailed. While they are in jail, Trump will be having his business. And this calls attention to young people, how you follow politicians. When the die is cast, you will be captured, you'll be jailed, and your politician will be doing his business and going about his life. So please don't follow people blindly because what happened in Capitol Hill some hours ago, the consequences are going to come up and I can tell you that for free. Secondly, I think Nigeria should be able to get angry enough that the democratic institution is being desecrated and as a result, should place travel ban on people that are key <laughs> actors. And one of them is Mr. Donald Trump. I think there should be a travel ban placed on him to Nigeria and then uh, other key actors. Because if America is starting to have a problem, the biggest democracy in the world, in the, in the black world, which is Nigeria, should step in as a big brother and caution them. I don't know what you think. I That's totally agree We agree. We're yeah, well, on talks. the same page on that one. <laughs> and uh, we now come to the, uh, to the end of uh, the uh, newspaper review for today. Thank you so much, Edhug, for always uh, coming on the program. Good morning to you. Thanks, Rob. Where is uh, Gerard Butler when you need him? Olympus has fallen. I, I don't see any Gerard Butler showing up or Jamie Foxx. Good morning to you. Stay with us. Uh, of course, we're going to be sharing with you what happened today in history, the 7th of January, some years ago.